Alright, what is going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to be explaining the difference between the Binance Smart Chain Network and the Ethereum Network. This is a big learning curve in the beginning. I know it was for me. Let me just walk you through this and give you the five biggest differences between the two and in what cases you would want to use each network. Okay, so the first thing to know is that there are many different blockchains. There is Ethereum, there is Binance, Smart Chain, there is Cardano, there is Polkadot, there is Avalanche, there's Solana, there's Matic, there's a lot of different uh, blockchains out there and they all have different pros and cons to them. Now, the differences between the Ethereum network and the Smart Chain network is that the Smart Chain network is owned by Binance and it's much more centralized than Ethereum's. So the Smart Chain is actually way cheaper than Ethereum. So when you do transactions on the Smart Chain, you are not paying $60 or $200 in gas as you would on Ethereum. Now, um, that brings me to my first point, which is with each blockchain, you have to be holding its native token to use the blockchain and interact with it. So when you're using um, Ethereum, Ethereum's network, you have to have Ethereum loaded on your wallet in order to do stuff. So if you ever made an NFT on, let's say OpenSea or Rarible, you have to pay the Ethereum gas fees uh, in order to do that because you're doing a transaction on Ethereum's network and you have to pay the Ethereum miners in gas. Um, so that's why you have to pay those fees. With the smart chain, it's a little different. You have to hold the BNB token, which is Binance's token. And that is what you use to pay for transactions and do stuff on the smart chain. Now the smart chain is probably like 95% cheaper than Ethereum's fees. Um, the most I've ever paid on Binance, I think was like maybe like 80 cents to do a transaction. So that's a big difference compared to Ethereum which is always a big variable. You never really know how much you're gonna pay with Ethereum. It could be $60 one day, it could be like $2,000 another day. It all depends on how busy the network is and just like how many people are trying to use it. So that's what affects the gas price on Ethereum. And uh, with Binance Smart Chain, it's much cheaper and you do have to be holding the BNB token to do stuff on there. So that is um, the blockchain differences and the fees associated with them. Now, the second thing is that both of these blockchains have separate coin codes so whenever you buy a coin it's usually based on ethereum's network so what i mean by that is that like probably 90 percent of the coins that you see out now are built on top of ethereum's network that means that those tokens are erc20 compatible which basically means that they only work on the ethereum network and similarly binance has its own coin code and it's called bep20 so if a token is BEP20, it can only work on the smart chain. That's another thing to keep in mind when you're buying tokens is that you're on the correct blockchain and that you're um, using it with the correct wallet. So you don't want to be buying a BEP20 token and sending it to your Ethereum wallet because you'll lose it forever. And vice versa, the same thing applies with Ethereum. You don't want to be buying an Ethereum ERC20 token and sending it over to your smart chain address because you'll never be able to receive it because they're not cross-chain compatible. Now, the third thing is that both of these blockchains have different blockchain explorers. So what a blockchain explorer is, is it's a website where you can type in any address. It could be your wallet address. It could be your friend's wallet address. You can type it in on this blockchain explorer and it'll show you the complete transaction history uh, account balance, everything associated with that account on the Blockchain Explorer. With Ethereum addresses, it's called the Etherscan website, and with Smart Chain, it's called the BSC Scan website. Now, the fourth thing is just because a token is listed on Uniswap doesn't mean that you can send it to a Smart Chain address. And similarly, just because a token is listed on PancakeSwap, Binance's version of Uniswap, doesn't mean you can send it over to your Ethereum wallet. Again, this is where the coin codes come into play. You have to make sure that your token that you're holding is either BEP20 or ERC20, and you send it to the token address respectively. And the fifth thing, kind of already touched on it, but you cannot send tokens that are ERC20 over to your BEP20 address. If you do that, they'll get lost forever. There's not really any way to recover it. There's not really any way to cancel transactions because everything is decentralized and there's no single point of 
kind of customer service that you can contact to fix that. So whenever you are sending tokens or receiving tokens, make sure that you're using the correct address um, and that you're asking the other person which network they're using it over. So always double check the network that they're using and the network that you're using so that you don't lose your tokens. And that pretty much wraps up the differences between the two blockchains. If you had any other questions or something else you want me to cover, you can drop it in the comment section. I'm always like willing to help you guys with uh, beginner stuff. And uh, if you want to join our Discord, I'll have it in the description as well. Um, if you want to like sign up for an exchange, you can use the affiliate links below as well if you want to support the channel. Um, and if you want to send like tips or donations, um, I'll have those addresses floating around here on screen. Um, and yeah, so. That's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and uh, stay educated.